Hi, I'm Marty Nemko. The word, uh, the word with Marty today is Israel. I think I want to start with a history lesson. I think I'm really trying to be as fair as I can. From antiquity, the Jews have suffered anti-Semitism. In antiquity, they burned down the Jewish temple, the center of Jewish life. In the uh, Inquisition, Jews were forced to convert to Catholicism and be burned at the stake. In Russia, or in, or in Eastern countries like Poland, uh, the pogroms, the Russian Christians came into the Jewish homes and raped the women, destroyed the homes, sometimes killed men. Of course, there was the Holocaust, six million Jews murdered. Uh, and now let's turn to Israel. In 1917, uh, the foreign minister of Great Britain, Balfour, uh, having looked at the fact that there were no real Arab small popu any real Arab population in Israel. It was mainly almost all Jews, and the the Arabs that had come had come because uh, paradoxically because they didn't know how to cure the malaria epidemic that was rampant in 19th century later 19th century nomadic areas uh, in the Middle East, and they came to Israel, and the Jews uh, who were living there were able to cure, cure or at least quell it. And then after the World War II, the United Nations facilitated this small sliver of desert to, to, be, um, to be a Jewish homeland after the Holocaust. And the Jews have again and again wanted peace. From the very day that uh, Israel was declared a, a state, the Arabs bombed them. And I'm on Jews on the holiest day, Yom Kippur, they, uh, there was an, uh, they, uh, uh, an attack on the Jews. In uh, 2005, ever really ever wanting peace, the Jews unilaterally gave Gaza. People talk about the West Bank. Why have the Jews set up settlements in the West Bank? Imagine that Mexico was setting rockets and bombs, which they were doing all the time. Russian made another bomb, the Iranian made bombs, into your Israel, into the United States. Wouldn't you want to set up? Uh, in the West Bank, which is a, a strategically, it's on a hill. Wouldn't you want to set up a place where you could detect all, all this? Wouldn't you have checkpoints to avoid terrorist bombings? And so those settlements are for that purpose. And now we see after the horrific barbaric attack by the Hamas, in which, remember, 75% of people roughly who are the Palestinians support Hamas's violent actions. And yes, I believe Israel has overreacted. But imagine you yourself were the victim of all of this endless enmity, and you're being attacked again and again. Can we not forgive them, given that we forgive other Middle Eastern countries that won't allow any Jews? In Israel, 21% of all the citizens are Arabs, are Muslims. And they not only are citizens, but they serve in the government, they serve on the high courts. That's not genocide. And the Jewish popu the Muslim population in Israel has grown at twice the rate of the Jewish population. Hardly what's called genocide, but it's a nice word, genocide. Apartheid, again. The Arabs in Israel have all the rights to citizenship. Of course, there are checkpoints for the reason I outlined. It's an existential threat. They've bombed bar mitzvahs, cafes, music festival, which is what, what, what there was October 7th. And when you think about the contributions of Israelis, they've created drip irrigation. They created much of the iPhone that we all use. I have a friend who has cardiac stents. They were invented by Israelis. It saved lives. It prevented open heart surgery. And, they, and these are people who have, as you say, have, you know, as we say, has had millennia of prejudice against them. And given this tiny sliver of desert surrounded by massive amounts of mortal enemies, are we not judging Israel by a double standard? Middle Eastern countries that kick out all Jews, there are no Jews in those Middle Eastern countries. They do clitorectomies on women. They make women wear hijabs and dare they have sex with somebody outside of marriage, they get beaten or killed. 
And if you're gay, ironically, the, all these supporters, the leftist supporters of Israel now in all these university campuses, many of them, if they're LGBTs, would be killed by the very people that they're supporting, ostensibly. Enough. I think Israel is a victim of a terrible double standard, the most recent manifestation of the millennia-long anti-Semitism that is born, at least in part, by jealousy of a Jewish culture that has long valued education and hard work. And, ironically, tikkun olam, which is to repair the earth. Jews and Israelis are overrepresented by, in the civil rights movement, in social work. Um, I believe Israel deserves a fairer shake. In the media, which is, you know, I consider very one-sided. And um, so that's my word of uh, Word with Marty Nemco, Israel. I do thank you for watching. I welcome your considered thoughts, your comments, constructive, respectful, like I've tried to be here. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. And certainly we welcome you taking a look at any of my 32 books. Probably the one most relevant to this would be either, yes, probably Thought Experiments, because it includes one which is a, what would be the world without Israel. Uh, but all 32 are on Amazon. Just go there, search on my name, Marty Nemko, N-E-M-K-O, and you will find more than you can stomach. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemko.